Thank you for tuning in to Faith Connection, where we help you connect to God. Welcome to Faith Connection. I'm Dr. Charles Blackstock, and I'll be the speaker for today. I want to talk to you today about trusting Jesus. We'll turn our attention to the book of Proverbs, chapter number 3, verse 5 and 6. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. These are some very great verses from the Word of God, and they offer great promise, great direction, and uh, something I think we should really look at today. Years ago, I was um, spending some time in prayer, and I became somewhat frustrated in my prayer life because I felt like I was spending too much time trying to tell God what I thought he ought to do. I, I mean, I've come to the place where I realized that I just didn't really know what should be happening in my life and other people's lives. I didn't have the wisdom, the foreknowledge to be able to say this would be best and God, please do this or please do that. And in my frustration, I cried out to God and I said, Lord, how should I pray? And uh, immediately he brought these verses to my mind and I began to apply them to my prayer life. But they're so broad in, in their uh, application to us. So let's look at uh, four different aspects of these two verses as we learn how we can trust Jesus day by day. The first of all, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. I am to trust God in my life day by day. I'm to trust Him in every aspect of my life. That is the great, uh, the great goal, perhaps, the, one of the great um, commands of Scripture, one of the things that God wants us to wants from us the most, and that's to trust Him. To live our lives trusting Him and walking in faith. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. And uh, um, my prayer is to be a, a prayer of trust. My daily walk is to be a daily walk of trust. It's to just believe that God is good and that God's way is best and that His will is best for me, and that His plan is best for me. And uh, sometimes we are tempted to trust ourselves. We're tempted to look to our own ideas for the direction in life. But God wants us to trust Him. And as we come to Him in prayer, particularly what we do in prayer, is we're trusting Him with the needs, the burdens on our, on our life, the cares that we have. He tells us to cast our care upon Him. And He tells us He'll meet our every need. And He tells us that He loves us and He'll never forsake us as a child of God. And so as we come to Him, well, we come to Him on the basis, the foundation of faith and trust. And that is one of the uh, the great elements in the Christian life is the learning to trust Jesus and learning to put our confidence in Him and learning uh, that God is sufficient. And we can believe that He will take care of our every need and that He will be with us day by day and uh, that nothing that we face uh, is too big for our God and that we can just trust Him. So many times we spend time in prayer trying to, uh, to tell God things uh, that um, we want and yet we don't exercise this matter of faith like we should. We don't look to God and say, God, I just trust you today, and I, I have confidence in you today, and I, I believe in you, and I, and I know that you'll do me right, and I know that you're good, and um, that you have a plan for my life, and uh, that I believe that plan is the best plan for my life. And God wants us to have a great confidence and a great trust in Him. So much of what um, God encourages us to do is to just to believe in Him. Uh, our salvation is based upon our belief that Jesus is who He says He is, that, the, that um, the Bible is true, and that He is our Savior, and He's our only hope, and, and we put that faith and trust in Him. We've junked all our other confidence in ourself, or, or in our intellectualism, or in religions, or anything else this world has to offer as a Savior, and we say, I trust Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And that's more difficult than it sounds sometimes. We can say we're trusting the Lord, but with all our heart is a challenge. And we, as we grow in our faith, as we grow in our walk with God, we more and more trust Him with all our heart. Uh, every time we put our faith and trust in Him, and He proves Himself faithful to us, and He comes through for us, and He meets our needs, and He carries our burdens, and He, and he works in our life, then we learn to trust Him more. On the contrary, when we don't trust Him. We get in a cycle in which we depend more and more upon ourselves. And so we come back to the Scripture and remind ourselves, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. The second aspect of this verse tells us not just to trust upon the Lord, uh, but it says, lean not to thine own understanding. And, in, you know, lean not to thine own understanding. So 
we as humans are so prone to try to figure things out for ourselves, to try to understand it and to put it in a context in which we can see it. It's so challenging for us, though, because we don't see the big picture. We just see life in little portions and, and little segments. Uh, one time, an individual described it this way. It'd be like if you were uh, standing at an intersection and a train is going by. And the train, of course, has the engine pulling it and all the cars and, and uh, just car after car after car is going by. Well, humanly speaking, we just see that train one car at a time as it comes by. But God sees that train from engine to caboose. He sees the whole train. And he knows everything about what's going to happen in our life. He knows uh, the future that he has for us. And he knows the ramifications of the decisions that, that we'll make. And he knows what will ultimately bless us and, and provide for us. But as we lean to our own understanding, we don't have that kind of foreknowledge. We don't have that kind of insight. And it's, it is, it's very dangerous for us to lean to our own understanding. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Sometimes, particularly in the matter of prayer, what I found myself doing was going to God and telling him all kind of details about things that uh, were happening in my life and the lives of others. And then I began to tell God what I thought he ought to do. God, I want you to heal this individual. And I want you to give this person a job. And I want you to uh, meet this person's needs. And I want you to um, work this out this way and work that out that way. And, and constantly I was beginning to uh, lean to my own understanding, not even realizing it. Uh, and yet in frustration, many times I found out that what I was asking for was not the best thing. And I didn't have all the knowledge. I didn't have all the information. I was very limited in my scope of understanding. And so I was praying, and many times I was praying amiss. I was asking for things that, um, uh, that would not actually be good. Years ago, when uh, just a few of us began <coughs> to build a, we started a new church, and we had a small congregation, and we didn't have a place to meet. And we found this location we thought would be a great location, but we were having difficulty convincing the owner of the property to, to, to lease us this facility. And we wrestled with this matter, and we, we um, negotiated with this individual. And, it, and after weeks and weeks, it was becoming very frustrating. We were praying, God, would you please give us this location? Um, only to find out that he never did give us the location to meet at. But in the course of it all, God gave us a much better location. And he provided us with a much better facility. And had we gotten that one, we may have never got what God intended for us. So many times we're leaning to our own understanding. And we're asking for something that's not nearly as good as what God has intended for us. And uh, so the Bible tells us to trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Don't try to figure it all out. Don't try to reason it all out. Some people will never trust Christ because they can't figure out everything that they think they need to know about salvation. It's amazing to me that we scientists have studied God's creation for thousands of years and still don't understand some of the most basic of concepts. Scientists know that there's a force called gravity, that gravity holds us to this planet and holds the planet in its orbit around the sun and holds even the, uh, the very smallest of particles in their orbits in, in a nucleus, in an, an atomic arrangement. And yet, we don't understand what causes gravity. The very basic of elements that, we will, that, that scientists know exist, but they have no understanding of why it operates the way it does. What causes gravity to take place? We can't understand some of the most basic of things in life. How can we begin to try to lean to our own understanding in our day-to-day -day affairs? And how can we, uh, that, that we don't see down the road, trust in our own decisions? What we need to learn to do is lean not to our own understanding, but to trust God and to uh, acknowledge Him. The Bible says not only... <laughs> to trust in the Lord and lean not to our own understanding, but in all thy ways we are to acknowledge Him. You know, when we begin to lean to our own understanding, when we begin to reason things, and we begin to develop our own plan, we actually begin to play God. <clears throat> but what we need to do is to, is to acknowledge who God is. You know, when we look into our lives, we realize that we were made by a Creator. We have a creator that uh, not only made us, but made everything we see. All things were made by him, the Bible says. And not anything that is was made by, by any other means. It didn't evolve. It didn't just happen. It wasn't uh, something that came up of its own accord. But God created us. And because he's our creator, he desires for us to acknowledge him. He desires for us to, to look to him and um, to, to trust him. And to not lean to our own understanding, but at the same time to recognize who He is. 
we look at the, the scripture, and, and I think it's important. In verse number six, it says, In all thy ways acknowledge him. Well, that's a, that's a great command. In all thy ways acknowledge him. You know, <clears throat> I think it's important for us to see that day by day, when we wake up in the morning, we acknowledge the fact that God has given, given us a new day. When we go into our life, and uh, I remember one time I was sitting at an intersection in a car, an automobile, and um, uh, I, I usually am in a hurry. I'm trying to get to, from one appointment to the next, and at this time I was involved in some business appointments, and uh, the light turned green, and it was my time to go. But for some reason, <clears throat> I just sat there. I can't explain it. I'm usually the first one to pull off to the intersection. I was the first car uh, at the light. There was nobody in front of me. And uh, I, would, I would have normally been immediately pulling out into that intersection. But for some reason, and I remember sitting there thinking, why am I not going? And within a split second, I saw this large truck run the light and come barreling through the intersection. And had I moved, that vehicle would have hit me right in the side uh, of my vehicle and probably killed me. You know, I just don't. Uh, I, I don't understand how people can live their lives and not acknowledge God. I stopped for a moment and said, thank you, God. You caused me not to move. You caused me to pause. So many times as we look through life, God is at hand working in our life, and God is moving things, and God is blessing, and God is providing. And You know, every time we take a breath, we never think about what makes our lungs operate, what makes our heart pump, and what keeps the sun shining, what makes the rain fall upon us when it uh, when it's time for the ground to be moistened. And yet God is providing all these things, and we don't acknowledge it. We look so much to ourselves. We look to our government sometimes. We look to our, our businesses and our own economics. We look to ourselves to provide our needs. And, and Jesus taught us in the Word of God that when we pray, pray to our Father which is in heaven, and, and pray, um, give us this day our daily needs, uh, our daily bread. And we need to acknowledge that God is God. We need to acknowledge that He is the Creator and that He's the one that we answer to. We acknowledge Him as God in all our ways by looking to the Word of God and looking into the Bible and finding out what this Creator, what this God has revealed to us about Himself and what He expects from us and what uh, He is looking for us to do. God is a holy God and a righteous God. And when we live in ways contrary to that holiness and that righteousness, we're not reflecting who He is in our life. We're not glorifying Him. We're not um, uh, living in a, in a way that be pleasing to Him. He can't bless us. And so as we choose to acknowledge Him, we must discover who He is. We must look into the Word of God and study it for ourselves. And the Bible tells us in the, the book of 2 Timothy, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. It's important for us to be able to please God, to acknowledge Him, is to get into the Word of God and read it and, and, and study it and understand it so that we can know how to please Him, how to acknowledge Him. We get up of a day and we thank Him that we've got a new day to start out. We go through that day and we look to Him and acknowledge His greatness and His grandeur and our dependence upon Him. We uh, look in our relationships and realize that uh, every marriage wants to succeed. Every couple wants to succeed in their marriage. But it's God that keeps that marriage uh, going the way it should. And every parent wants their children to be successful and to be safe. And, uh, and we try our best to provide for our children. But ultimately we realize it's God that builds that house. It's God that blesses those children. It's God that takes care of our need day by day. It would be amazing for us to just to be able to see and picture what would happen if God just took his hand off of us? Well, we get that picture in the book of Job. Job was a, was a righteous man. He was a godly man. He was a good man. And, and the devil came and said, God, you know, the only reason Job serves you is because you're so good to him. And for just a moment, just for a, a season, God took his hand off of Job and let Satan begin to work on him. You know, he limited Satan. He, he couldn't do everything, but he pulled his hand back and let Satan begin to afflict him. And you see the things in the book of Job that, that Satan would do to him. He took his family. He took his wealth. He took his health. He began to destroy Job's life. That is the destroyer, and that's what Satan longs to do to every person. Men and women, men and women were created in the image of God. And because of that, Satan hates us because he hates God. And he would destroy us. And he's like a roaring lion roaming about seeking whom he may devour. Uh, he's a, a destroyer. He's a thief that's come to steal and to kill and to destroy. 
And if God were to take our, his hand off of us and God were to uh, allow this world to attack us, we wouldn't stand very long. And yet we go through life sometimes and never acknowledge that God is blessing and God is protecting and God is providing. And uh, God wants us to, in all thy ways to acknowledge him. The Bible says whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. And uh, we need to look to our Heavenly Father on a daily basis and say, God, I know that you're God. And I know that you're able not only to acknowledge who he is, but acknowledge his ability, that he's able to provide, that he's able to bless. Sometimes when we're going through our darkest times, uh, we're tempted to, uh, to dismay and to cower in fear and, uh, and just lose our faith. That is the time that we acknowledge God. I know, God, this is a hard time in my life, but I know that you're able to see me through this. I know that you're able to provide the healing. <laughs> we had a dear church member years ago, uh, a lady in her, um, in her 80s, I believe, and um, she came to church and she said, the doctors told her she had a tumor, a mass, and it had to be removed. And it was possibly cancerous, and they were really worried about that. And she wanted us to pray for her. And I remember that, that Wednesday night in the prayer service uh, when the congregation gathered around and, and our pastor began to pray for Miss Hawkins. And Miss Hawkins um, was, a, was a dear lady. She, she trusted Christ late in life. Her and her husband were, had not been Christians. And, and later in life, they come to know the Lord. And, and for those remaining years of their life, they were faithful to the house of God. They were faithful to the word of God. And they loved their preacher. And they loved the Savior. And that night we prayed for her. <clears throat> Well, Sunday came around, and um, Miss Hawkins came back to her church, and she said, can I give a testimony? And she stood to tell this story. She said she went to the doctor, and they began to prepare her for surgery. <clears throat> and they had her in a gown and had her all cleaned up and prepped and, and ready to do the surgery. The anesthesiologist came in and talked to her about uh, how they would put her to sleep, and the, the nurses were checking her blood pressure and getting the IV set up. And then right before the surgery, the doctor came in and said, Miss Hawkins, are you ready for this? And she says, and in, in, a, in a, 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 just a sweet tone of an older lady, she said, yes, doctor, but I don't think it's necessary. He said, why do you not think it's necessary? You've seen the x-ray. You've seen the reports. You know why we're doing this. And Oh, she says, yes, doctor, I know. I've seen all that. But she said, at my church, they prayed for me, and I just know that God healed me, and he's taken away this tumor. And the doctor kind of chuckled and said, well, that's good, Miss Hawkins, but... You know, we've got all the reports that show you need this surgery. And she said, that's fine. You can go ahead and cut me open, but you're not going to find anything. And uh, she was so confident and she was so convinced that God had taken care of her need. And she had such a confidence in, in her God. And she acknowledged his power in her life so much that the doctor began to question. And he said, I'll tell you what, Miss Hawkins, here's what we'll do. We'll take you back to x-ray and we'll take another look at that. And when we find that that tumor's still there, then you'll know that we need to do the surgery. And so they rolled her back to x-ray, and they took pictures, and they brought her back in. And the doctor came in the room and said, Ms. Hawkins, I don't know how to explain this, but there is no tumor, and we don't need to do surgery. She said, I know how to explain it. And she acknowledged that God had worked in her life, that God had taken care of that. And I, I know that God provides healing, and I know God provides blessings. I, I remember... Uh, days in my life when we were going through financial trouble and we had prayed and asked God to provide. As a matter of fact, there was one particular instance where we had, uh, had, were sitting at home on a Saturday and looking at our bills and realized that we just didn't have the means to, to pay all our bills and uh, that we had a, a payment due for our, our, our house and we had uh, other bills due and, and food to buy that week. <clears throat> and uh, we were struggling with the fact that we just couldn't we couldn't keep. We couldn't. We couldn't pay all these bills for what we money we had, and then we thought about our tithe, and we knew that God had wanted us to. That the Word of God tells us that we're to give a tenth to Him and be faithful in that, and we were always faithful in the, the giving of that. And so that night, on a, a young couple had not been married but just a few years, we did, we began to discuss this, and I remember saying to my wife, "Honey, we must be faithful in the tithe, and we acknowledge that God is God, and that uh, He'll take care of us." And so we did. That Sunday morning we went to church and we gave the tithe even though we knew that would put us further behind and that we couldn't pay our bills. And it was a, but it wasn't a question because why? In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And so we did. <clears throat> and then on Monday I went into the office in which I worked. And the, my supervisor came by. Actually, he was the president of the company. And he came out. I heard him come walking down the hall. And he got to my office door. And he stuck his head in my office and said, Hey, let me tell you something. Saturday, and he began to describe what happened to him Saturday, about the same time my wife and I 
were talking about tithing and about uh, trusting God. He said, Saturday, the Lord just spoke to me and said that you deserved a bonus. And he, he said, I told the secretary to, to write you a check. Go down the hall and get it. And I went down to the, the, the accounting office, and they wrote me out a check that covered all our expenses for the week, paid our house payment, covered even more than our tithe. And I just thought, isn't God good? But he's not just good when we see the miraculous. He's always good. And we should always acknowledge him. And all thy ways acknowledge him, even when we don't see the hand of God. When we're in a place and we don't think the money's coming through, we don't think we're going to get the healing, or we don't uh, see the miracle happening. God is still good. And we should always acknowledge him. And all thy ways acknowledge him. Job, in his uh, pit of despair, with all the sores on his body and having lost everything, and his wife telling him to curse God, he looked up at her and said, You're talking like a foolish woman. said, We receive such good at the hand of God. Shall we not also receive bad? Uh, he just kept praising God and kept acknowledging that God was good. I want you to see that God says, In all thy ways acknowledge him. And uh, finally, in verse, the last command in verse number 6, he said, And he shall direct thy path. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. What a great promise. He said, if we'll trust in the Lord with all our heart, if we'll lean not to our own understanding, if we'll acknowledge him that he's able, he will direct our path. And this leads us not only to a promise, but it leads us to the final instruction from this passage. Not only will God direct, but we need to let God direct. If we've, as we've laid all this out to God in prayer, and we say, Lord, I'm trusting you with this need. I'm trusting you with this care. I'm trusting you with this burden that I carry. Even I'm trusting you, God, with the fears that I have in my life. And I'm not trying to figure it out. I'm not telling you what to do. I don't know how to direct you, God. You're the, you're the omnipotent Lord of the universe. How can I tell you what to do? I'm, I'm not trying to lean to my own understanding. But I do want to acknowledge that you're my God. And you said you'd never leave me nor forsake me. And I do want to acknowledge the fact that I believe you can meet this need. And I believe you can uh, guide me through this. And I believe that you're still good. And I just want to acknowledge my faith in you and my trust in you. And the Bible says, and God will direct your path. But when he does, so oftentimes I've seen people, they prayed and asked God to bless. And asked God to direct. And, asked, and said they were trusting him. But yet when God directed they cowered in fear or lack of faith and would not follow his direction, only to find themselves uh, missing the blessings of God, missing the provision of God. I want to say to you, my dear viewer today, that you can trust the direction of God, and you must be willing to trust that. You must be willing to let him lead you and guide you. The Bible promised you, and he shall direct thy path. Many times people get to the brink of where God would have them to go. i never forget the children of Israel. They, they had uh, been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. And God parted the, uh, I mean, the, um, I'm sorry, they've been, in, they've been in the land of Egypt for many years. And they come to the Red Sea. And God parted the Red Sea. And they crossed over on dry ground. And they... <clears throat> They um at the brink of going into the promised land. They stood at the point called, place called Kadesh Barnea. And God already told them that the land was theirs and that he would win the victory for them and that they could inherit this great promised land. They had, they had trusted in the Lord. And they had seen the hand of, a, of an all-powerful God. And yet at that point, as he was directing them to go into the land, they cowered in fear and said, we can't do it. And because of that, they wandered 40 years in the wilderness. And all that generation died in the wilderness because they just would not follow the directing hand of God. I, I, I encourage you today, as God gives you direction, I, I'm not talking about feelings. I'm not talking about uh, uh, you know, eerie uh, circumstances that um, you know, just seem to be... I'm not talking about horoscopes here or... Or enchantments. I'm talking about direction from the Word of God. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit directing you into promises and uh, things that you can back up with Scripture. As you're willing to follow the direction of God, God will bless you. God will work in your life. Be submissive to what He wants. The Apostle Paul went to God one time and said, God, I, I can't handle this thorn in the flesh. It's been plaguing me. It's driving me crazy. I, I, I want you to get rid of it. And three times he went to the Lord and said, God, deliver me from this. And three times God said, no, my grace is sufficient. You can take it. 
And, and, and Paul said, I will just trust in the grace of God. And he made this declaration, God, if this is your plan for me, he said, I will glory in my infirmities. He said, because when I'm weak, you're made strong. And Paul began to learn something about leaning not to his own understanding, about trusting the Lord with all his heart, acknowledge that God had the right to, to leave him with this affliction. And then as he directed him in these steps, Paul just walked in the grace of God and in the strength that God was given. I'm going to ask you a question today. Are you willing to trust Jesus? Maybe you've got questions about, uh, can, I, can I trust him with my soul? Can I, um, can I believe that who he says he is? I challenge you to do this. Take God at his word and trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Don't try to lean to your own understanding. Don't try to figure out your salvation in terms of religion or terms of self-righteousness or terms of education. Look to the Bible and trust what the word of God has to say. Jesus Christ is the only Lord and Savior. He told us in John chapter 14 that he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But he also said, and John said, More or not that I say unto you, you must be born again. But he said, He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. He told us in Matthew, he said, all, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And you will find rest to your souls. And I just want to encourage you that you can trust Jesus and you can believe in the Lord and you can have confidence in the Word of God and you can quit having to figure it out yourself. Oh, what a joy it is that day when you realize I don't have to plan it all and understand it all and, and work it all out. I can just trust God day by day. We often sing a song, a little chorus in our congregation says, I can trust Jesus. And I want you to know today, you can trust him. Have you been struggling with that? Why don't you just put Jesus to the test? He said, test me, try me, prove me, and see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. God is not, um, he doesn't mind you testing him and proving him. He always proves himself faithful. And he always proves himself good and true. And if you'll put your trust in Jesus, and if you'll quit trying to figure it out yourself, and if you'll just acknowledge that he is the Lord, and he is the Savior, and there is none else, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. And as God directs you, maybe he's directing you today. Do you feel him uh, leading you today to, to kneel and bow and call upon him as your Lord and Savior? Maybe... Do you have doubts? That's the flesh. Maybe you uh, hear something whispering in your ear not to do it. That's probably the devil. But if God is calling you to put your faith and trust in Him for salvation, would you not pray to Him today? If God is calling you to trust Him for direction in your life, would you not trust Him today? Would you not lean to your own understanding, but acknowledge that He is God and let Him direct your path? I believe, my neighbor today, if you'll just trust Him, if you'll just rely upon Him, you'll find Him faithful and true. You'll find a Savior that loves you with all the love that, that a God can give. You'll find a, a, a Savior that has compassion. Even in your failures and in your infirmities, He'll be there for you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. I want you to know that you can trust Jesus. And you'll find that He will direct your path. And what a wonderful life it is, living a life in fellowship with our Heavenly Father and a loving Savior and a God that's... Uh, directing you day by day. I encourage you today, won't you trust Jesus? Thank you for tuning in to Faith Connection, where we help you connect to God.